Kirby, Nightmare in Dreamland, Kirby, Nightmare in Dreamland. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Everybody remember that commercial for this game when it came out? Such a weird, awesome commercial. And it really went well with the uh, aesthetic that this version of the game is going for, because it definitely has like the same font and everything as like the Kirby anime. Oh yeah, we got some plot. The peaceful world of Dreamland is a great danger. In Dreamland, dreams always flowed from the wonderful fountain of dreams. The fountain of dreams collected the hopes and dreams of all living things. Man, they, so much dreams in this. <laughs> it was also responsible for the sweet dreams and rest that came from deep sleep. But one day, everyone in Dreamland lost the ability to dream. Aw, King Dedede was bathing in the fountain of dreams. <laughs> that little shit. <laughs> He even had, or had even taken the Star Rod, the source of the fountain's power, and broke it into pieces that he gave to his underlings. Now Kirby must embark on an adventure to restore peaceful nap times to all the residents of Dreamland. Aw, look at him go. He's got that little stick and everything. Yeah, so this game, why is there even a save file on here? This is weird. <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe this this copy had one on it. We'll, we'll start a new one, even though it's like 0%. This is very strange. I should probably have checked that out beforehand, but... This game is a remake of Kirby's Adventure. Uh, ooh, we got sub-games too, and a sound test. Usually you have to unlock the sound test, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, Kirby's Adventure is one of my favorite Kirby games. It was actually the first Kirby game I ever played on the NES, and that was playing my auntie's NES because every time I went to my grandma's, whether it was for a summer or something of the sort, oh man, this looks so good. I really love that they updated uh, all the backgrounds and everything. It really, it kind of has like this feel to like most Game Boy Advance games where they had this like kind of 3D effect. Games like Golden Sun, for example, like a lot of their character models kind of had like this interesting 3D effect to them. Oh man, I got sparked to shit already. But yeah, I used to visit my grandma quite a bit back in the day, and my auntie had an NES, and I would rent this game a lot from like a little store, like a little corner store, um, that was just out, like out in the little town, because she used to live on a farm, until more recently where she, uh, moved into this town, um, because they ended up selling the farm and stuff like that, and, um, yeah, it was, uh, this little town, you could rent, like, VHS movies and all that stuff, because, if you guys don't know, like, this, the original game came out in, like, the 90s. It was the second ever, oh, wow, this is, the stage is already done, holy crap. Um, it was the second ever Kirby game released, and the first one was Dreamland on the Game Boy. And it, this game was also the first one to introduce, uh, oh, we got a bomb game, interesting, okay. I'm gonna check this out and see what this is. Bomb Rally. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like that bomb game where you have to like suck up certain things that King Dedede would throw at you and you had to avoid the bombs by letting go of the button. What the hell is this then? Always hit a bomb with a fragment. Oh, okay. So it's like you had to hit it to the next person before it blows up, I'm guessing. Oh no. Oh, I missed it. Oh wow, that was awful. <laughs> I guess I'll have to practice that a bit more. No bonus. Aw. Aw. Well, that's interesting. I guess they changed up the bonus games, which is cool. I thought they would have kept them. I really hope the crane game is still in this, though, because that would be awesome. But sorry, back to my story there before I got distracted. Um, so yeah, this game was the first one to introduce copy abilities, because they, they wanted to do it for Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy, but because of the limitations of the Game Boy, they just weren't able to, so Kirby was only able to suck up enemies and spit them out. And it made the game like very simple, uh, very easy. You could pretty much beat the original Kirby's Dream Land in like 20 minutes, maybe. <laughs> Might even be sooner than that. Oh, we got a good old Poppy Bros. I wonder what ability he gives you. I don't think Bomb is in this game. Oh, he gives you Crash in this one? That is so weird. I should be checking out the... Okay. I want to check out the description, too. Warning. Use only as a last resort. I'm guessing they don't have a move list in this game because this game was so simple. Like, literally all the abilities, because it was the first game to have it, you just press the attack button. Because the, the Nintendo only had two buttons. Like, jump and attack, basically. So, 
they couldn't really incorporate certain things until much later. I'm, I'm guessing, like, maybe the sword might have, like, the uppercut move, but as far as I remember, it doesn't. So, oh, I got a maximum tomato down there. That's not too bad. Oh, yeah, I should check out this, too. This beams whip it, or this beams like a whip. Wop, shh, beam it. <laughs> this is an interesting descriptions. I kind of like them. They're, they're cute. I love the little hats, too. I've always loved the beam hat. I, I don't know why. It's just adorable. But, I mean, Kirby's always adorable, so, yeah. But, yeah, this game, like, Kirby's Adventure, um, because I've never actually played this remake, so it's gonna be interesting, like, revisiting it. Like, it already looks amazing. Um, like, the original game was one of the last ever released on the NES, so it really pushed the limitations of the, uh, the hardware. It had the most color out of any NES game. I think that was what people touted it as. Um... But this really ups the ante, like, this is definitely way more colorful, but the Game Boy Advance is a much more powerful system, so... Even this background, like, this is really cool. I love the swirly clouds around the mountains and everything. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, yes, okay. So we got the fire ability earlier, and in this game, the burning ability and... Um, the fire ability are separate, so you don't get the charge with the fire ability until they combine them in a future game. In this one, the burning ability is the fire charge, and that's literally all it is, and it's very, very useful. Um, except you just have to kind of watch when you use it, because you don't want to run into things, because it does dissipate pretty quickly. Yeah, so there we got the good old hothead with the fire ability. Whoa! Okay, I don't want to lose my fire ability. Alrighty, perfect. Oh, I thought this frog... Oh, okay, he is gonna jump on me. Oh, what? How did I... Oh, I still got hit by him. I thought I killed him with the burning ability. Whoopsie. That's alright. And yeah, the poppy bros don't give you anything, unfortunately. The bomb wasn't until much later, as far as I remember. Which sucks. I think... I think the bomb didn't actually exist until, like, uh... Kirby Superstar, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. Oh god! <laughs> I forgot they could do that. Shoot those freaking fireballs out at you. They just kind of snipe you like off the side of the screen. It's ridiculous. Oh, okay. I thought it was gonna fail there. Come on, let's get a number one. Ah! I can only get number two. You really have to hit it like right at the bottom of that, which is insane. Head on to the next one. But yeah, this game like was one of the the uh first or the, like the one of the games that i rented so much back in the day it was crazy uh what does this one have to say i can't lose with this sword if they zig i can i cut them if they zig i cut them too <laughs> that's interesting i love these little pedestals with the the moons on them it's really nice nice aesthetic and also, like, these doors, later on we're going to discover a lot of secrets in the world. I'm going to try to get as much of them as I can, but the doors will still be flashing if there's a secret inside of them. Like, the, especially the star will be. So, I don't think the first world has any secrets in it, as far as I remember, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, I should take the cutter ability. Oh, look at that, he's like a little fruit ninja. <laughs> he's got, like, the, he's, like, cutting the watermelon in half. The Cutter Boomerang is coming right back at ya! Aw, oh, look at that! A little reference to the anime, that's awesome. We gotta check that out. Aw, oh, Mr. Frosty! Yeah! Come here, boom! Show me your thick ass, Oh yeah! Mr. Frosty looking thick as fuck! The enemies are definitely way bigger in this game too, in this remake. Oh, look at the little ice climbers thing! Oh my god! That's adorable! This is also another game too, so we will encounter chilies later on, but the freeze ability just gives you this, and then you'll get another freeze ability with the chili one that blows like the uh, the ice out of Kirby's mouth. So they they started like combining those as well in future games, which is nice. So God, I keep getting smacked around. There we go. Get take that. <laughs> I do love this costume though. It's adorable. Holy crap. He looks so cozy. I just want to snuggle up to him, you know? Ooh, the needle ability. Holy crap! That is deadly looking. Oh, God! <laughs> that poor Waddle G just ran taint first into that. Hands off. Here, pointy spikes. There, pokey spikes. Okay. So somebody was telling me that the needle is, like, one of their favorite abilities when we were playing, um... 
Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Which, by the way, I forgot to mention, too, the reason I'm playing this um, is because we are playing a lot of Kirby games on his 30th anniversary. We've been trying to go through as many games as possible, but because Michael has COVID right now, I don't know if, how many of you saw that community post, but he uh, is still recovering a bit. Um, unfortunately, he ended up contracting it like early on in the week, and it really sucks, but... You know, it is the way it is. We both avoided it. Like, I have I still have avoided it for, like, two and a half years, and he was really good. Like, he's been going to the gym and stuff like that and still didn't catch it. He's been really careful, and, you know, it's just... It's bound to happen eventually, but I'm glad that he's recovering very, very uh, quickly, and I, I thank you for all wishing him well. I really appreciate that. He is my best friend after all, so... Oh, we got good old... I forgot that the doors, like, they don't display the boss, but they just have King Dedede giving you a peace sign for some reason, <laughs> which is really weird. But yeah, it pretty much like has the door, like, right on the top of Wispy. This is gonna be super easy. Like, you can literally hold this button and kill Wispy. And there he is. <laughs> the easiest boss in gaming. I'm glad that they tried to make him more difficult in future games. Like, even in Dreamland 3, when we played that back, like, a couple months ago. Um, oh, yeah, the little opening here where I think... Yeah, he gets bonked by a Waddle Dew. <laughs> it's like, why is he daydreaming about that? That's really funny. Um, but, yeah, they... Like, even Dreamland 3, they had him, like, run after you and stuff and try spinning things at you. Oh, yeah, the exploding coconuts. I wonder if these are, like, the knock-knock nuts that we uh, encountered in... Kirby in the Forgotten Land, too. Ooh, I should grab the parasol. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, I love that. He's like, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> the sun shines on this parasol of mine. Where I walk, enemies balk, and I float gently down. Kind of like a haiku or like some kind of poem or something. <laughs> it's, it's all kind of cool that it's actually in Kirby's perspective, but wasn't it like established in a game that Kirby cannot read or something? I'm trying to remember what game it was. <laughs> it was really funny. Oh shit. Oh my god. One thing I'm really, um, really excited for too is to revisit Kirby's Epic Yarn. And if you guys don't know this too, and I can put it up like a little bit on the screen here, probably not play the commercial and everything, but, um, there's like, there was a commercial, a Japanese commercial for Kirby's Adventure. Oh god, I don't want that to fall on me. Um, that actually had the aesthetic of Kirby's epic yarn. Oh, the tornado ability. Oh, yeah, you can't attack him when he's doing that. I think you can suck him up, though. But yeah, I loved this ability when I first played this game, although it is very difficult to use because um, it pretty much just makes you fly. Like, you can't, you can't lower yourself and you just kind of go through the air, and then you can just fall on top of enemies very, very easily because it kind of disappears pretty quick. But yeah, the, it was really weird, like, I was looking up stuff about the Kirby's Adventure, and I forgot that the Japanese commercial had, like, this, um, this, like, yarn type of thing for it. It was so interesting, and I, I think they, like, feel good and maybe Nintendo, because if you guys don't know, like, Kirby's Epic Yarn was actually developed by a different company called Feel Good. Uh, they probably took that commercial in mind, I would assume, and kind of created it off of that. This background is gorgeous, holy crap. Oh, and we're already at a desert now. What is that thing in the background? It looks like a stadium or something. Almost kind of looks like an N64 with a cartridge in it a little bit, which is really weird. I'm gonna take the sword again. I think we're gonna be facing a boss. Oh yeah, the wheel, okay. I just gotta avoid him, because he's gonna run past me. Oh yeah, he's really slow though. Oh, except he fell right on me. He's really slow and then falls on me anyway. I should take the wheel though. Yeah! L ride like the wind, fast, too fast. He's just like running away from it, he's like, oh god! You know what I look like right now though? Like, not only a 90s kid, which we have referenced before, but I look like that white guy from Offspring's pretty white, white for a fly, uh, or pretty fly for a white guy. Sorry, the music video for that. But I also look like Fred Durst because I'm rolling, 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 rolling <laughs> from like the early 2000s or something. God, I can't believe I used to like Limp Biscuit. What the hell was wrong with me? 
Such an awful band. Oh yeah, this is cool. It kind of teaches you like you bounce off the wall and then just keep going. I like that a lot. And I'm pretty sure there's a one up down here. I'm gonna grab that. There we go. One thing that's really weird about this game too is that like a lot of the the rooms where you get an ability, um, that you only use them for like that one room or maybe two, and they could just kind of teach you how to use it. So, oh, I should try this bomb rally thing again. See if I can do better. Because I'm kind of curious what kind of reward you get from it. I would assume it's just one-ups, because I think that's what it was in the original game, too. Because we do have the copy rooms, as we noticed with the sword. Oh, boy. Okay, don't hit this. Oh, there we go. I was like, don't miss it. It's finally coming to me. Ah, got one of them. Right on. Oh, what the hell? What is that thing? I don't remember that at all. I don't know if I can change the direction of it. It seems like they can, but... I'm having a hard time figuring that out. Oh boy. Oh god, whoa, it's so fast! Oh, I didn't expect him to hit it back at me. Aw, look at how sad he is. Aw, Kirby. Oh, we got a one-up. Oh, because we defeated one of them. Oh, that's interesting, okay. That's pretty neat. Oh, this background, I love this. I love all the blue and the purple sky is so gorgeous, holy. I was actually like up really early one day last week, um, and I looked at the sky and it was just pink and and uh, purple and everything in the clouds, and I was like, oh my god. Oh, if I remember exactly, this room has a UFO in it. Yes, it does. Okay, I need to grab this. Hell yeah. I love this. This is like one of my favorite abilities in Kirby, just because of how interesting it is. It's so different. Wow, I'm so lucky I copied a UFO! I can do four different moves, it all depends on how long you hold the B button. Yeah, so you can charge this up pretty to max and shoots a big beam, and if you press forward and B really quickly, he does like this beam thing. But it has to be fairly quickly. And it's only when he's moving, pretty much, as far as I've noticed. It's a good move, very good move. Oh yeah, I gotta make sure I don't lose it. This, this ability, there's a one room later on in the game, I think in Rainbow Resort, which is the last world, that has a whole bunch of them. But other than that, it's pretty rare to find it most of the time. They'll be in specific rooms and they fly by so quickly, it's really hard to, uh... Oh, jeez, watch out for the Bronto Bird. There we go. Get up here. I think this at least leads to a one-up. Yeah, it doesn't have a secret room yet. Unless there's something... Oh, no, that's just a... Uh, that's just death down there. Whoa, look at me. I'm spinning my my bits around. <laughs> That's cool. I just love the look of them. So yeah, the, the UFO is like a very rarely used ability in the Kirby games. Like, I believe they used it in uh, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror because that was made by a different company as well. Oh yeah, Meta Knight. Oh yeah, we got the uh, little sections where we fight his uh, minions that we encounter a lot in in uh, Kirby Superstar. But this is the first this game is also the first appearance of Meta Knight too. And I remember being like blown away by his uh his design in the early games. No, I don't want to get forked. Go fork yourself, please. <laughs> the only thing is like if you start attacking with the uh oh geez. If you start attacking with the UFO, you have to be facing the same way cuz it won't let you turn around in the middle of an attack. I'm holding on to it pretty well, which is nice. I won't go bother grabbing that yet. All right, let's try to get number one. Come on, nah, I'm not pressing it enough at the end there. That's so unfortunate. But yeah, they uh, brought it back for Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, and then it came back for Planet Robobot, I found out. Like, it's, it's a reward for using an amiibo, and it's also a reward for getting 100% in that in that game too. And oh, they don't let you keep you let you keep it between stages. Oh, of course, that's unfortunate. Probably because it's like so overpowered. <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, I haven't completed Planet Robobot 100% yet, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. But um, I believe you have to get like all the stickers in the game, and because it's random, it's it's like the figures in. Uh, um, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, where they're just random, so you have to play, replay through levels and stuff to get them, and I believe you could use Street Pass to get, um, some, some play coins is what they called them. Oh yeah, the clock guy! I don't know if he ever came back for, 
for another game at all. I believe this is the only game he's appeared in. Oh yeah, and he gives you the Mike ability. <laughs> Aw, seeing Mike's name there makes me miss him even more. Take this, boom. I look like a coach just speaking into a megaphone. Ooh, the laser. Oh yeah, this ability is so cool. So it like shoot, or like deflects off of slopes and stuff like that. It's so neat. We just gotta avoid shooting a lot of these though. Oh god, because they just drop enemies on us. So I'm just gonna skip past all this, except for this one. There we go. And depending on where you hit them on the slope too, it also makes a big difference. Whoa, what is with this background? Like, the sky looks so ethereal, like, kind of dreamlike. Maybe because we're in dreamland? It's very possible. What's in this door? Oh, okay, we just got another thing for health. Yeah, like, they pretty much want you to use it here to get rid of that enemy, too. It's so neat. It's really just, like, this game is like, okay, we got these copy abilities, see what we can do with them, like, with the limitations of the, the NES and stuff, and then... I'm just glad that they got to, like, expand upon them even more as the series went on. It's just so amazing. Wee! Oh, so close! If I just even closer, I could have grabbed up and, like, pulled myself up there. But not quite. Oh yeah, level 5. What I also loved about the, the layout of this, too, and a lot of games in the future, like, M Super Mario, uh, like the new Super Mario Bros. games, for example, on the world map would kind of have like this display of what the level would end up being like this one obviously where the door is like leading to a tree so it's gonna be like a forest level yeah see like it's it's so neat i think this was like one of the first games other than like super mario 3 that kind of did that idea and it really helped you figure out like what kind of level you were in for and i love that uh the future mario games started doing that as well and Oh, we got some health over there. I'm just gonna ignore that, though. Love the palm trees. Even this background, like, this is gorgeous. Like, I love the purple in this game. Like, oh, man. It's so nice just seeing, like, a remake of one of my... One of my favorite Kirby games. Or even, like, the first one I ever played. Like, just crazy. Oh, some health. Okay. It's crazy that we haven't encountered, uh... One of those switches yet. I don't think we start encountering them until, like, World 3, which is Butter Building. One of my favorite levels. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. I believe there's a... Oh, those Maui heads are so annoying. <laughs> the Caboos, I think that's what they're called. There we go. I believe there is... Yeah. The burning over here. And then we use this to break some specific blocks. Like, these ones here. We can melt right through the metal blocks. I think only burning and hammer can get rid of those as far as I remember. And you can also use burning to get through Gordos, like that. I don't remember how long it took me to figure that out when I was a kid, but yeah. Oh god, Gordos everywhere, holy crap. <laughs> oh yeah, the high jump, I want this so bad. There you go, I love his little cape. Big jump, big tackle. So I know like they brought this ability back for from Star Allies, I believe. Um, but in that game, you could actually charge it up, too, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, I meant to hit the little poppy bro instead. If you hit the poppy bro, it actually gives you a maximum tomato if you don't, don't end up destroying it by accident like I did. Oh, I think I got it. Yeah, that was perfect. I landed right on my feet. And I love how the UFO is the one that greets you at the top. Gives you a good old one-up. Yeah. I look like a superhero, man. So amazing. And I believe this door here is, uh, yeah, it's a warp star. Yeah, it leads you to level two there. Or you can go through all the levels. Oh, yeah, we got an arena thing. I believe these are just for copy abilities, though, if you want to use them. What is the second boss in this game? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it's this thing. What is the name of this thing? I don't think I've ever known. But yeah, they definitely brought back um, Addo or Adeline, if they if they are two separate people, which seems to be the case. Um, I believe you can swallow these two to get abilities, which is very interesting. I'm gonna shoot that at them. I think. Oh God. Okay. Just roller skates into me. Oh yeah, the microphone. Take this. 
Ha! <laughs> there we go. I also love this background, like the jigsaw wall and like the rainbow painted all the way from like the background to, to the top of the ceiling. It's absolutely gorgeous. So much detail in the background. But yeah, I don't know what the name of that is. You guys will have to leave me a comment in uh, about the boss's name. Oh yeah, good old butter building. I love this world so much. Level 3 butter building. But yeah, I believe, like, they just started introducing, like, Addo and Adeline, if, you know, if they are the same person, which a lot of people speculate, which I have mentioned already, um, and then just kind of got rid of that boss, which is very interesting. I don't know if they'd ever bring that boss back in particular, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for, so much for joining me for the first episode of Nightmare in Dreamland. I have a lot more to say about this game, especially, like, growing up with it and stuff, so I'll do that in future videos. And thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day, and as always, bye-bye.